Why aren't we kinder and more appreciative? Let's start with some definitions. Appreciation is opening your heart to allow yourself to be enhanced. And that's really what it is, allowing yourself to be enhanced by attributes of persons or beauty in nature and art. So when you appreciate a person or appreciate nature or art, you actually become a better person. Life means more to you. You feel more vitalized. It's a felt, not a verbal experience. It's not compliments. You actually feel that this person is making your life better. It's visible in emotional demeanor. That's why you don't really have to express it in words. See, this person's feeling appreciative. Obviously, they're appreciative. And when they're really appreciative, they don't notice any kind of environmental stimulus like a train coming. Kindness is both thoughts and actions. Kind thoughts are wishing someone health, happiness, and well-being. Kind actions are helping someone in small ways be well or happy. Say this is a little boy feeling well and happy because he's making his little brother well and happy. I like this one because you would think that person needs help, but they're helping themselves by helping the kitty. Appreciation and kindness probably increase endorphins and serotonin, although that's not certain because it's just so hard to research. Endorphins relieve pain and, and serotonin regulates mood. That's why they're important psychologically. I remember a client who was wounded in combat and was in terrible pain, but then his colleague was wounded and he drug his colleague into behind a barrier where he wouldn't be shot. And while he was doing that, the, his pain stopped. So the endorphins he got from trying to help his partner actually relieved his pain. When I have a headache, I used to have terrible headaches, and when I would get them, I would listen to music. And the music would relieve the pain and would give me serotonin. I would be feel more sociable after hearing the music. I'd want to talk and listen to my life after I listened to the music, even though I was feeling down or in pain before it. We clearly like ourselves better when kind and appreciative. So what keeps us from being more appreciative and kinder? And here are the major inhibitions. They seem to consume a lot of energy. There's a dread of disappointment, failure, rejection, or exploitation. And that's real because you are opening your heart interferes with getting your needs met. That's the narcissistic version of I love you, getting my needs met. And hidden guilt, we'll talk about each one of them. Though harder to experience when physical resources are low, you're tired or hungry, appreciation and kindness actually generate energy. You feel more alert and alive if you try to do it if you open your heart to it. And you can test that hypothesis for yourself. When you're tired, hungry, or stressed, make an effort to appreciate your partner and children or do something kind for them. And note if your energy level doesn't rise when you're doing that. But you have to try because on autopilot, you won't do it. Selfish inhibitions or getting your needs met, um, that gives you no serotonin or endorphins. And that comes from viewing appreciation as compliments and kindness as investment. In other words, I'm going to do something nice for you, but you better do something nice for me. 
that makes you need more from others because you're entirely dependent on the response and makes you seem demanding, entitled, and manipulative. Whether you intend to be or not, that's the way you seem. Now, the irony is the most selfish thing you can do is allow yourself to experience appreciation and kindness. It, it enhances the self like few other things do. And that requires self-reward. If you realize the self-reward of appreciation and kindness, you'll transcend disappointment rejection, failure, or exploitation. You're less likely to experience those things, but if you do, somebody does disappoint you, you know that you did what was right for you. Now, the hidden inhibition is guilt for not having been appreciative and kind in the past, and that inhibits appreciation and kindness in the present. Guilt results from violation of your values. So if you feel guilty for not being appreciative or kind, it tells you that that's a strong value for you. But guilt does not subside until you act on your values, although it, it often hides beneath anger, resentment, and depression. So you don't know that it's guilt because what you're aware of is the anger, resentment, or depressed mood. So you can test this out. Think of a time you were angry or resentful at your partner or children. What might you also have felt guilty about? And if you really think it, about it, there's almost certainly some hidden guilt. And you're not acting on the motivation of the guilt to connect. Instead, you're blaming it on someone and that's producing the anger. Now, how would you have felt had you acted on your guilt with kindness or appreciation? Now, here's an appreciation test. Develop images, just two or three, images of appreciation based on qualities of your partner or children. How do I appreciate thee? Let me count the ways. That's a take on Elizabeth Barrett Browning's favorite poem and her most famous poem, How Do I Love Thee? But what she lists are really forms of appreciation. <laughs> they are not inherent in love. You can love without appreciation, but they make love so much better. Here's an appreciation countenance. When you look at that person, you can appreciate her. How can you not appreciate this? This is appreciation. And so is this. Another appreciation test is develop a few images of beauty in nature or art. Get in the habit of making daily kindness thoughts. Wish someone you love health, happiness, and well-being. Repeat for one minute every day. I wish them health. I wish them happiness. I wish them well-being. Daily kindness actions are helping someone at least once a day with kindness in your heart. So when you live with someone, you do things to help them, but you're more often doing them on autopilot or resentfully rather than with kindness in your heart. So develop that habit. It is one of the more self-rewarding things you can do. The secret of a good life is to practice. 